Welcome to Telerik UI for Blazor, a course to help you get started with using the Telerik UI set of components and features in your own Blazor projects. My name is Alex Iskind, and I've been training developers in modern web technologies for a few years now. And in this course, we'll take the approach that puts you in the shoes of an engineer that's adding features to an existing application for a client, RPS. Now, you've already developed version one of the application, which is an issue tracking web app. And now your client needs some more features added to the application for a version two release. In this course, we'll incorporate the Telerik UI for Blazor components and features into a modern Blazor application developed using the latest version of Blazor. You'll be doing some exercises in this course, so make sure you download the code base to help you get started. We'll look at the before and after states of the application so that you have an idea of what the goal of each exercise is. We'll start out with adding basic components to the application, and you'll see how you can harness the power of Telerik UI for Blazor in a matter of minutes. This will show you how to install and use buttons, dropdowns, inputs, and more. And then we'll also get into more advanced components like the chart and the grid. Now, components don't live in isolation, and it's important to learn how they interact with each other. So we'll see how to incorporate Telerik UI components to interact with existing functionality and with each other. We'll also see how easily we can change the theme of all the components all at once and how to build your own themes. By the end of this course, you'll know how to navigate the Telerik UI for Blazor demos and documentation. You'll learn how to install Blazor components and how to incorporate them into existing Blazor applications as well. Thanks for joining me and let's get started with the course. Telerik UI for Blazor is a library designed to offer a full breadth of UI components and UI related features that give developers everything they may need in a single toolkit. The components have been built from the ground up to ensure you experience shorter development cycles and quick iterations. And while Telerik UI is known for their extensive set of UI components, Telerik UI for Blazor is more than just UI widgets. Along with the UI components, Telerik UI includes optional tools and features that help development. These are features like document processing, which are cross-platform libraries that enable you to process content from different formats and work with archive files. There's also validation built in, as well as globalization for simplifying the creation of multilingual apps. There are also other useful features that come with the library. Excel export for grid, accessibility, and keyboard navigation. There are three other huge benefits to using Telerik UI, and that it's backed by a team of developers with unlimited professional support, there are frequent updates to the library, and there is an extensive documentation set. In order for you to be successful with this course, let's take a look at some of the prerequisites next. This is a beginner level course for those that are getting introduced to the Telerik UI for Blazor library. However, it is aimed at those developers who are already familiar with ASP.NET core concepts before jumping into this course. We're going to focus on Telerik UI in this course and the Razor components that come with the library and our interaction with writing ASP.NET core specific code will be very limited. However, there are a few things that you do need to know, and that's why it's assumed that you already know how to put HTML and CSS together to form web pages. You should know C Sharp as the coding language, and you should have some familiarity with Razor, the markup syntax that was introduced with ASP.NET MVC that is now widely used in ASP.NET Core applications, as well as the new Blazor based applications. What you don't need to know going into this course is Blazor. If you aren't familiar with Blazor itself, I will give you a quick introduction in the next chapter, and then we'll dive right into Telerik UI for Blazor after that. You don't need any prior Telerik UI experience or knowledge. We'll cover all that you need in this course. And the same goes for Bootstrap. We're using Bootstrap for initial styling and layout, but it's not required knowledge. I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition in this course, which is a free tool available from Microsoft that you can download as well. Visual Studio Professional and Enterprise will work just as well. You'll need to have a Telerik UI for Blazor license, which will grant you access to the Telerik UI NuGet repositories that we will use in this course to get set up with the library. You can also use Visual Studio Code. Since this is a cross-platform SDK, you can also use Visual Studio for Mac as well. All the code you'll see in this course is code that you can build without Visual Studio. However, in this course, we will be using Visual Studio itself, as it is still the most popular tool to build .NET applications in. 
You may want to have Git set up and configured on your system so you can clone the demo code. However, the code is hosted on GitHub, which also allows you to download a zip archive of the demo applications, so having Git is not a strict requirement. Let's go over some resources that you should have handy while working on this course. Before we dive headfirst into this course, there are some sample applications you'll need to download. Don't worry, I'll let you know how and where to get these a little bit later. But for now, let's chat about the handy dandy web pages that you'll want to have open while we explore the world of Telerik UI. The first stop on our tour is the Telerik.com website. Here you'll find a link that says demos. And if you scroll down a little bit, right in the middle, you'll see Telerik UI for Blazor. This little gem is your ticket to demos and sample applications. That's the quickest way to get to the demos right away but you can also get to the Blazor related documentation as well as Blazor related demos by going to all products, UI for Blazor, and then you can click on demos here. This page lists all the popular components at the top, the sample applications in the middle, and all the rest of the Blazor components and features listed down below. Let's take a look at the sample application that I was mentioning earlier. This gives you a peek into how all the components are used and arranged. It's hosted on GitHub, so you can either download the source code or you can clone the repository. Either way will work. It's like having your own personal learning toolkit. All right, back on the Telerik demos page, if you go to one of these components, let's say the grid, for example, you'll want to keep this page open for reference as you're going through the course and as you're developing your own apps. The list of all the different components is available on the left. On the right, you'll find the example running in the browser, the source code that's available, that includes the Razor components, the code behind the services and the other files that are related to this demo. And you can also open this up by pressing this edit Intellirik REPL button. Here you can tinker with the components, getting comfortable with them before you start building the project right inside your browser. Make changes on the left, click on run and a new Blazor instance pops up on the right. By the way, this entire demo site is available for download. You just need to log in into your account, head over to downloads, Telerik UI for Blazor. And then under other setup files, you can find the Telerik UI for Blazor commercial zip archive, which along with other files that we'll go into shortly, will also contain a Visual Studio solution with the demos. Also on this page, you'll find the documentation is available for download as a PDF right here from your account center. Besides the demos, you want to keep an eye on docs and support. On this page, you'll be able to search the entire database of documentation, for example, Type grid in the search box and you'll get related information about the grid. The documentation and the demos are all indexed here. And if you go to one of these articles in the docs, you'll also find related articles that'll take you to the live demo. So you can jump back and forth between the demos and the docs. Going back to the Blazor docs, you'll find a couple of other important links here. Knowledge base is one of them. This contains searchable custom how-to and troubleshooting articles, essentially articles written by the Telerik team and you might find these useful when you're learning how to use the library. Also, don't miss the community section, specifically forums. If you have any issues, you can ask a question here, or you can search for outstanding issues or issues that have been resolved already. Ask questions, share insights, and learn from the community here. It's a wonderful resource, and I encourage you to make the most of this. While we're going through the course, you should have the demos page open, and in another tab in the browser, you should have the documentation open as well. Once you've explored the website and clicked around and familiar with it, then you're ready to dive in. Let's continue. Before we start coding, we need to see what we're coding. Let's take a quick tour of the project we're building called the RPS Project Tracker. Here's the dashboard page of the Project Tracker, where we can see active issues, closed issues, open issues, and some general dashboard related statistics about the current issues in the system. At the top, we can filter by time period, whether it's three months, six months, or one year. And we're also able to filter by assignees for those items. At the bottom of the dashboard, we have a chart. This chart displays the open items versus closed items for the selected time period and selected assignee. All the filters at the top interact with each other, and they are applied to the interactive chart down below. So that's the dashboard. Now, on the backlog page, we have a grid view of all the issues. This grid view is sortable by the configured properties, and it's also pageable. And we can filter on this page as well. We can filter by my items, open items, or closed items. We can also add new items here and select the type of item we wanna add, and the new item is added to our list of items. 
I can go into the details for each of the items and do some modification of the data by changing the title description, the estimate, the type of issue, whether the issue is open or closed, select a different priority, and even reassign the issue to somebody else. When I save that issue, the data is updated and it's reflected in the list. And that's a quick tour of the application that we're going to be working with. You might want to follow along as we progress through this course. And in order to do that, there are two projects available on GitHub that you might want to download or clone locally. The first project is RPS Tracker Blazor. This is the RPS Tracker application using Blazor. This version does not have any Telerik UI in it yet. So this is the starting point of the code for our course. If you want to follow along with what we're doing exactly, you can download this as your starting point too. The second project is RPS Tracker Blazor Telerik UI. This is the final state of our application. This version has quite a few of the Telerik UI widgets and components that we're going to be implementing in this course. And you can use it for reference if you run into any trouble. Both of these projects are Visual Studio solutions, and they each incorporate a simulated backend project that's included as part of the solution. All you need to do is download the source code, build it, and run the web project that's included there. We'll do this together in a moment. Now, just a quick note about the projects for those of you that are trying to skip ahead. You can run the first project I mentioned right after downloading and everything will work just fine because there are no dependencies on third-party libraries. But you won't be able to run the second project until we've added the Telerik UI for Blazor NuGet package to it. So hold off on running that one until we've gone through the process together. We're going to start with this one. Here you have the option to clone or download the zip file. Now, I've already downloaded this and placed it on my machine. So all I have to do is open this up in Visual Studio. This is the solution. We're going to be running the rps.web.server project. The other two projects, rps.core.standard and rps.data.standard, are just .NET libraries that have our data. So go ahead and right-click on Build and Build a Solution. And once you see the Build Succeeded message, you can go ahead and start this in IIS Express. This will go ahead and start up our project. And it should open up your default browser. Once the application starts up, you'll see the dashboard page. All this data you'll see here is simulated data that's part of the backend projects. And this data is stored in memory while the application runs. Here you'll be able to navigate the application from the dashboard page to the backlog page to the details page of each of the items. You'll be able to interact with each item here. If you modify any data, just keep in mind that since this is data stored in memory, it's going to be wiped out each time you restart the project. So this is the first project. This is the starting point application. Now let's head back to the GitHub account and find the other project, which is RPS Tracker Blazor Telerik UI. This is the project that has Telerik UI Blazor components integrated into the previous project. In other words, this is the completed state of our application. Go ahead and clone or download this project as well. Now remember, before you run this, there are a few other steps we need to do, and we'll come back to that. But first, let's briefly introduce Blazor, and then we'll see some installation options for Telerik UI Blazor, and then we'll come back to getting this project up and running. If you're new to Blazor, then this is a great chapter for you to get started. If you've already developed with Blazor and you just want to see how to incorporate Telerik UI for Blazor components and features into your Blazor application, then you can continue with the next chapter, or you can stay and consider this a refresher. In this chapter, we'll compare and contrast Blazor hosting models. I'll guide you through the steps to create new client and server-side Blazor projects. And then we'll dive right into the basic building blocks of a Blazor application by learning about components, how to bind data in events, and how to separate out your C-sharp code into code-behind files for a greater degree of separation of concerns. All right, let's dive into Blazor fundamentals.